A lifelong concern of mine has been running out of time or not having enough time. Well, I guess it was. What would you do differently? Oh, yeah, oh, <laughs> Managing this complicated topic of time, the preciousness and shortness of life. It feels like a curse sometimes to want so much out of life, to live as fully as possible, to be so curious about everything. When I was 13 years old, I had an existential crisis, uh, of course, because that's who I am. And I was like, fuck, before I know it, my life is going to be over. It felt like the entire time I was a kid, I was hearing adults talk about how as you get older, your life speeds up. And this was a terrifying thought to me. I didn't want to think about it. I was in denial about it for the longest time. And I think I'm no longer in denial about it. I've come to realize that life moves damn quickly. And the conventional answers that are available on the internet on how to handle this, I just don't buy them. They don't feel like complete answers. That's why I'm making this video. And yes, I am a silhouette in front of a cityscape because I thought that would be a cool visual metaphor of the speed of modern life. I don't know, I'm trying to be creative. There are two main explanations I've heard for why we feel like time is accelerating as we get older. The first is that each new year or month or week of your life represents a smaller percentage of the life that you've lived. So it's kind of like in the full database of your life, each new moment is a smaller part of it, a smaller percentage. Okay. And the other explanation, which is sort of related to the first thing that I already said, is that our brains seem to pay more attention when there's novelty, right? When something new is happening. As in, time seems to slow down when you have new experiences, like your first kiss or the first time that you traveled abroad. And the theory basically goes that as you start to run out of these first experiences, these new experiences, time speeds up. So the clear and obvious conclusion to this is have more experiences, right? Go chase new experiences and time will slow down. And I think that's true to an extent for a certain period of time and then that stops working. Okay, so I'm calling bullshit and I'll tell you why. I chase experiences for a living. If you've been following my channel for any amount of time, you've seen that I'm all over the place. I try to travel as much as possible. I try to throw myself into the unknown as much as possible. I wanna live life as fully as I possibly can. And so for a long time, I thought, okay, if I throw myself into as many new experiences as I possibly can, life won't feel like it's flying by so quickly. Spoiler alert, it's still flying by pretty quickly. I say that because I'm not claiming to have all the answers, but I think I'm onto something here because I've realized that constant novelty, which is how I've lived my life for a long time now, alone is not the answer. There's another bigger issue here at play. In fact, what I found, and this is where I start to go a little bit out there, okay, so I hope you can follow, is that anything in life can be a distraction including new experiences. And there have definitely been periods in my life where I have been chasing new experiences as a way to run for myself, run from something within me that I don't wanna face, my demons. In fact, there had definitely been times where the passage of time has accelerated because of my focus on having new experiences. You see, there is no cookie cutter answer to this problem. If there was, we would have all already adopted that answer. And this is why this is such a universal human experience and I have three propositions to counter this acceleration of time that so many of us feel like we're experiencing. I kind of think about these things that I'm about to share with you as lifelong practices. We're really not talking about something that is like a one and done, oh, I found the solution, now I can move on to something else. That being said, I love talking about these kinds of things. I mean, this is the kind of conversation that I love to have at a dinner party. So if you'd be so kind as to give me a few minutes to hear me out, let's dive in. The thing that I've most strongly felt since as early as I can remember is this constant feeling of urgency. Life feels so precious. There's so many things I want to do. But as I get older, I'm realizing that rushing is the opposite of what you should be doing. It's the best way to waste time. You're not going to get anywhere by rushing. And this was best put by Andre de Shields. Got to fix the lav. It's so simple. Slowly. Slowly is the fastest way to get to where you want to be. Oh my God. Light bulb moment. It's just a very simple wording of a very powerful idea. Less is more. Trying to do it all at once is not a good idea. So my first answer to this question of how to not let life slip by is to stop running. And I know that sounds counterintuitive. And that's why I say that these answers are not easy. It turns out it's infinitely easier to run from yourself than to face your demons. I'm coming to realize, and this is still a really hard one to say and to own fully, 
but my unhappiness is nobody else's fault. My unhappiness comes from fighting the way that things are. My unhappiness happens when life does not correspond with how I want things to be, uh, and I get stuck on that. You know, if anything, this is sort of a, a reminder to myself because I still get so hung up sometimes when things do not go the way that I want. I'll be honest with you, here's just a vulnerable example. I'm still affected by the performance of my videos. I know I shouldn't care, I know the numbers don't matter, but when I work so hard on something that I'm super proud of, I spent a million hours working on it, I want as many people as possible to see it. I can't control what's gonna be interesting to people, I can't control how the algorithms are gonna go, but it's still a struggle for me, and I just mentioned that just to make the point that like, I'm not saying this from the point of view of like a, a guru, you know? I'm, I'm trying to figure this out for myself as well. But what I can tell you with confidence is that this is definitely a massive time killer. It's like the amount of energy and effort that I lose when I get hung up is incomparable. Wow, this is really hard to do in public. I'm trying to do this to change it up a little bit, but I definitely feel a little bit like an influencer out in the wild and people are looking at me. Look at this shot, honestly. The tree of life is behind me. I should use this lens a little bit more. It's, I love the wide angleness. Okay, getting a little bit distracted. Back to what I was saying. Going in circles is one of the real culprits for losing life. All that rumination, you know, getting stuck in negative cycles. And Seneca, one of the Stoics, actually wrote about this. He wrote a book called On the Shortness of Life. And he actually believed that life is long. We just waste a lot of it. And this is like a prime example of that. My second answer for not letting life slip by is to be very wary of comfort. And comfort is another one of those tricky shapeshifters. It can look like many different things. It can look like routine and stability, but it can look like many other things too. It can look like constantly traveling, constantly seeking out experiences so that you don't have to face your demons as I mentioned before. That's the thing I feel like so many people misunderstand and that I misunderstood for a long time because I thought I was doing everything right by throwing myself out there, going to foreign countries and whatnot. And I don't think that's bad, but I think what matters are the intentions behind your decisions. You know, my search for constant novelty was my way of running for myself, especially during a few pretty dark periods of my life. So basically, in summary, just doing what spikes your adrenaline is not the full answer. It's not gonna fix this problem of life moving so quickly. Okay, vlogging in public. I had a moment of clarity recently when I was talking to somebody who was sharing with me their experience of Vipassana. And for those of you that don't know, Vipassana is like this 10 day meditation retreat where you don't do pretty much anything other than meditate, including like talking. You don't have your phone, you don't have distractions, you just have all day to meditate. And this is remarkably difficult. I have quite a few friends that have done this and not all of them have made it through the 10 days. And this person was describing it to me by saying that those 10 days felt like 10 months. And I just had a moment of clarity when he said that because it made me realize like there's the answer. You know, if you really want life to slow down, go do something like this. This is true discomfort. It's not sexy, it's real life, which is a great tagline, honestly. If there are any Vipassana marketers out there, uh, feel free to hit me up. I'm just kidding, Vipassana is not for profit. Um, anyway, you can actually do Vipassana for free, and it's definitely something that I would like to do at some point. It's ironic, isn't it, that I continue to use the excuse that it's hard to find 10 days to block out to do something like this. It's that kind of thinking, I feel like, that leads to a life that goes by so quickly. I am ultimately the one that decides if I have time for something like that or not. I mean, it's literally free. Anyway, this is a warning against comfort and its many forms. Do not fall into the most comfortable version of yourself. It's not worth it. And here comes a sentence that might not make a ton of sense when you first hear it, but constant discomfort can be a form of comfort. And that's like the point I'm trying to make here. Okay, just for a little bit of context on where I am, for those of you that are curious, this spot uh, is called Puente de Cibeles in Mexico City. Really a very cool spot. So my final point is just a little reminder on the power of mindfulness. I'm not a Zen master, I'm not a guru, but I find it helpful to receive reminders from my own community, other people that I know, to stick with meditation, to stick with slowing down and being mindful. And I think a really great layman definition of mindfulness is just doing things one at a time. We're not made to be multitaskers, and we live in a world that likes to pretend that we can. This constant attention shifting, constant information bombardment, I think we all have to make a conscious decision to fight against that, or it risks taking over your life. And the wonderful thing is that just like how I said pretty much anything in life can be a distraction, 
I think there are many things that can be a meditation. Once again, it depends on the energy that you bring to each task, the energy and attention that you bring to each moment. So I hope that you found that helpful. I think I'm going to do more videos on time in the future. It's just one of my favorite topics. Okay, so I came back to this tree of life spot because I, I just love this spot so much. I love this tree. While I have your attention, I did want to mention that I just recently released merch for the very first time in my life and it's only available for a week. We are two days into that week already, uh, but if you're interested, it's still available if you're seeing this within that week. Amor Fati is a phrase that has been just extremely personally meaningful to me. It's a love of one's fate. That's a loose translation. I take it to mean making a conscious decision in every moment to be as open as possible. I don't feel like philosophy has to be stuck in thousands of years ago. You know, I feel like these are very relevant ideas to the world that we live in today. So yeah, there's a hoodie, there's a few different shirts. Maybe you saw this earlier in the video. I'll leave a link to it down in the description below if you're interested in checking it out. This is a huge way to support me and my work. If this drop does well, I will do more in the future and I have tons of ideas. This clothing is sustainably made. It's in collaboration with Seek Discomfort, which was created by the Yes Theory guys. And they've made a huge effort to make things carbon neutral, to use recycled and organic materials. And I just recently released on this channel a short little video explaining a little bit more on what this phrase means to me. Oh no, this is falling. So yeah, I just want to share my gratitude to all of you for all of your support. And I'd love to hear from you on if you have any other ideas or contributions to this conversation about not letting life slip by. I think it's something that we should all talk about more. If you want to help me out in the algorithms, consider giving this video a like, and I'll see all of you very soon.